Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a Trio, a Kenwood Trio SG402. So it's an RF signal generator with six ranges. It goes all the way from 100 kilohertz to 30 megahertz. It should be as old as 1975, but it's really looking quite modern and quite all right. I think it's a little bit annoying. This one goes the other way, right? I mean, wouldn't you find this annoying? I just cannot stop playing with this because that is just stupid. I mean, <laughs> what the heck? So we got, oh, that's just a level, not calibrated in any way. It's just a uh, more or less the frequency and then whatever kind of level. Not even, they're not even writing any kind of indication what the heck is this, millivolts or kilovolts or something in between, right? So no clue whatsoever. And again, output low and high, yeah. What kind of low and high is that? You have to figure this out yourselves. Output is there and no clue whatsoever what kind of impedance that is. And uh, modulation, is it AM or FM? Well, we'll figure this out somehow. And um, it's not that big, it's quite lightweight. And that will be the external modulation input. Yeah, that is more or less the intro for this. And look at that. Nobody screwed this up. So it's nice and beautiful. And yeah, that is a tiny little scratch, but it's really in a good, good state. Let's look a little bit on the internal things here. So the circuit board. It's really, really simple. Just a single layer circuit board. But I really like circuit boards where they put a second color of paint here on the top. See, this shows quite clearly the copper on the back side of this single layer. And then you have, of course, the white, the silk screen, another silk screen. So you got two silk screens here on the top and you will clearly see that what they're doing here is they are showing all the copper traces with the black silk screen on the top side how beautiful is that for much faster and much easier service what we find here is um, two field effect transistors and uh, I think it's like one, two, three, four, five NPN transistors. Mains goes through to the board through a fuse, and that will be the voltage selector for mains. I don't really like this to be here on the signal circuit board or just this close. I, I really would have liked this to be completely out of the way, but that's just me. The output from the transformer is a center tapped, see, a center tapped AC. So they need only a, a double rectifier diode here to make uh, the voltage. And uh, a little uh, filter here and a Cena diode and a little transistor. I think it is that one is doing a little uh, pre-regulator filter for the oscillator part i think this is the oscillator part we got uh, six tapped inductors for the six uh, frequency ranges and they're uh, switched by the frequency band switch uh, all the way from milli henry's to uh, micro henry's uh, in those um, tapped inductors the output stage is, uh, I think it's uh, one of those transistors here. And then the output goes to um, yeah, via a capacitor. 
a little RF gain adjustment, 500 ohms and another 100 ohms, and then it goes to a 500 ohm output level potentiometer. And then the output attenuator here. So there's this 270 ohms and a 100 ohm there. And I don't know, this is probably also, I don't know, what, 47 ohms. And then uh, another capacitor to the output banana plug. So that's more or less what there is to say about that uh, part of the circuit. Um, that is, of course, the frequency adjustment uh, capacitor. They're only using half of it. See, there's no wire to the right section. Only one brown wire there. This one is from Alps, and sometimes you will find date codes on those capacitors. And this one is from 74. Here you go. Um, that is our mains power switch. And they are, of course, neatly using the top section because there's not that much distance to metal down here. So they're only using half of that. Mains is a neon bulb, uh, mains on indication neon bulb, and a little resistor for that. And then they're using another tapping on the transformer, a lower voltage tapping, so that they are not... Uh, wasting too much voltage over this resistor to the neon bulb. But there is one really funny thing I like to show you. Look at the mains transformer. The way it is mounted here. See, this is the bottom chassis. Everything here is in one piece chassis. It's bent like that. And they pressed all the fittings and look how this is press fit or uh, welded like that, right? And this is, of course, for stability for the circuit board. It's really nice and stable, this uh, this method here, mounting the way that it's mounted and the way that it, that is good, good and stable construction. But what I really find funny is this bend here, because you can see the way that this bends up. This is, this is the bottom plate in one piece. There isn't any grooves or any cuts or anything like that, just this little cut here and this another cut on the other side. So how to do that? First of all, you need to press really, really hard to make this go this way, right? And then it will it will try to bend this piece of material out of shape because how are you doing this? You, need, you have to actually pull this material apart to be able to do this bend. So this is a very, very difficult bend and you have to use an insane amount of force and uh, you could definitely make this uh, bottom plate bend. But what is the whole purpose of this? Why would you mount the transformer up here and not just directly onto the chassis? And I got a few theories, but if you really know, please comment and tell me exactly why they do this. This is not the first time I've seen stuff like this, but it's just really weird with this tiny little transformer here. So uh, a few of my theories, it can of course be mechanical vibrations because yes, uh, transformers, they do vibrate a tiny little bit uh, on mains frequency and different parts like the capacitor uh, here and anything, actually the wires, whatever that moves, will create some sort of a measurable, um, detectable modulation. So you probably don't want that. So if that is really a concern, why are we having mains wires all over the place like that? And this close to the capacitors after all. And then here is low voltage, um, high ripple current wires. Why are they, I mean, that close to the circuit board? They, this, this transformer could have been all the way in this corner and they could have, you know, made all the wires, you know, much more isolated. They could have had a little shield or a wall to that capacitor if that was some sort of a concern. But it's actually mounted quite close to the circuit board. So again, that is a little bit of a, that confuses me a little bit in the other direction. But there's also another thing, if you think about it, this transformer 
is made of thin sheets of metal and that's of course to break the eddy current path because that is uh, going around in circles like that um, obviously the same way as the windings so that is why you have all these isolated plates but there will still be a left current going in this uh, uh, the iron and the metal the mounting and everything like that but if you break it up like that and only have it mounted in these and these sides that means you do not have currents that goes between the pins or in this circular way it's not going to transfer itself into the chassis and this way you can mount the transformer without any electrical isolation or thermal isolation you just mount it to your chassis like this because now you have broken the eddy current uh, circular path by those screws and this way you don't have uh, currents going into your chassis and it will couple to whatever and you can also see the circuit board again is electrically connected to chassis and then you have a ground going around and again see chassis and every, down here this is the output see chassis again we have another point to chassis here i mean so definitely they don't want currents to flow in the in the chassis that will be added to your output so i think that is probably the main reason for doing this really really difficult uh, bend in the chassis so this is probably the five seconds where i input the schematic so we can compare the schematic with the circuit board and uh, yeah well this just shows exactly what i just uh, explained about the whole uh, board and uh, layout so i'm not gonna go super much into detail or repeat anything i just wanted you to see the schematic as well so let's try and power this up and see what happens uh, that is 220 volts input and what have i done Modulation, no. See? I don't know if you can read this value up here. It says 151. I didn't touch anything here, right? Let's just have a little look what it says. 151 kilohertz. And yeah, it looks a little bit like a sine wave, right? And what did I do with the settings right here? So, A is here, and I tried to set it for 150 kilohertz. If you look at the needle here, it's probably a little bit to the right of 150. I mean, look at that. If I try to put this here in the middle, right? And then it says 150 kilohertz. Whoa, I am impressed. And that is, of course, the first range. But the, what have we got here? So this is 50 millivolts per division. And um, this is the high. And this is the low. Yeah, so that is, so it's quite low um, output. So let's try something interesting. Let's let's look at the amplitude. This is the first range. I really want to know if it got the same output um, level in all six ranges. That could be absolutely amazing. But of course, I I'm just measuring here. Ooh, see, with a scope. So yeah, let's let's see what happens here. So this is B. And uh, that it says, uh, so where are we in B here? So this is 250 kilohertz to 600. Let's try and put this for 400. Is there, right? And it says 398 on my scope. So that was B. And we got about the same um, level. C, again, the same level. So uh, that is uh, 550 to 1.5. Let's put it right there. We have an indicator line here for about 900. And then my scope reads 906. So that's not too bad either. 
Well, let's dial a little bit here on the scope. Ooh, see here we got a lot more uh, output uh, level and uh, that is in range D. So uh, that should be here about 2.5 megahertz and it says exactly 2.5 uh, uh, megahertz. So let's go for range E. Oh, a lot more. I have to crank down the scope like that. So in E, uh, what have we got here? In the middle, it should be 6.5 megahertz right here. And I read 6.52. And the last range is the 30 megahertz range. And let's dial it up to here. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, it's okay. This is probably due to mismatch of my output and all that kind of stuff. So that should be about 20 and I read 19.93. So, wow, I'm super impressed. Okay, in this uh, range here, let's just look at the, the output level again and then go through all the ranges. I mean, it's not really really bad or anything I think that could be pretty uh, useful for all sorts of stuff and then it's it's nice and fine and stable with the frequency adjustment here like that all I really want to know now is um, the modulation what kind of modulation this is this AM or FM or something like that let's uh, let's try and play with that so here you go. This is, uh, of course, AM modulation, as you can see here on my scope. And I'm using external uh, modulation at the moment, one kilohertz, just to see if that works. And there's also a, um, let's turn this modulation off and go back again. See, here's my output. And then I crank it over to internal modulation. See, we also got internal uh, modulation oscillator uh, working. So that is... Uh, Nice and fine. That's, of course, a l much lower frequency, but it's not uh, super important uh, what kind of frequency that is. And I bet it's, of course, the same. See? Depending on your... There's no difference in anything here. This is, see? No matter what kind of frequency you're in, you're going to get exactly the same modulation. Same level as well. So that's, 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 I'm very impressed about that, actually. I would expect the modulation level to be uh, affected by that, but nope, they also fixed that somehow. Really good. I'm actually really happy about this unit. <laughs> that is nice and beautiful. So there's only one last thing to say, and that is thank you very much for watching. I hope you had a little bit fun. And uh, please like and subscribe and tell all your friends. So, I will be encouraged to make some more funny videos for you. See you around. Bye-bye.